Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of What is in Our Stand Today. It's a hashtag you can follow. I use it across all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, here on YouTube. I'll, in the description, show notes, whatever you want to call it, I'll have the social media links, my Strava link as well, so if you want to follow me. What we have today is a bike that went through a crash, so we replaced the rear derailleur, and on the crankset, we needed to replace the 30-tooth chain ring. We couldn't find one, um, and I ordered from Shimano and a couple of distributors. Um, dates were pretty far out there, so we found a 32. So let's walk over to the quasi bench. It's actually my my uh, my sales counter, but uh, when I shoot videos, this doubles now as a workbench. Now, when you are working with these direct mount chain rings, and this is what I mean by direct mount, there's not there's no spider, and so you don't have chain ring bolts like on on conventional type. Um, crank sets with a spider and then the, the chain ring bolts bolting a chain ring to the spider. You just have this lock ring here. And if you're working with this, you're going to need either the Shimano TL-40, I'm sorry, FC41. And that's TL for tool, FC for crank sets, 41. And that 41 basically is the outer dimension of this lock ring, which doesn't measure 41, but it's rounded up to 41. It's like a 40.5 or something, okay? But if you can't find, which I couldn't, if you can't find the Shimano TL-FC41, almost did it again, then you can get the Park Tool LRT dash four okay now this tool i i just like the way it's made the shimano one is really boring <laughs> but this one's a nice looking um blue color like everything for park right and it's got wrench flats here for this crow's foot okay and it's a 36 millimeter crow's foot and that part number is right here let me know when you got that. All right, so now you take this crow's foot and put that bad boy on there. And this, you can see the torque value on here is uh, 35 to 50. This is a, I'm sorry, there's a spacer on here that... Um, so this is actually the second attempt at this video. <laughs> so that's why that spacer is on there. So in the previous video, I installed this chain ring with this lock ring. And let me show you what this looks like on the vise. Now, I believe that every home mechanic should have a vise. It's a very, very uh, helpful tool. So what you'll do is, I've got just a, a t-shirt there. And what you'll do is you set your torque. So remember it, it was 35 to 50, so I got it about 43, 44. And with these wrench flats here, put that tool on there and then watch the neck right here of the ratchet. Okay, so that's torqued. And this is more for the benefit of the video. So one thing I did not mention as of yet is that when you're installing these, and it's it's kind of idiot proof, but you know, we wanna make sure we point everything out. You'll notice here there's a square 
notch, and then all the rest are just regular notches. Now that square notch is basically your guide on the crank arm itself, okay? And you know, another way to look at it is, it is opposite to where the size of the chain ring is, okay? So there's the size of the chain ring. It says 30 tooth. That one says 32. And so your notch is right there. And that's where you would put your um, chain ring onto your crank arm. Okay. So now what we're going to do is just install this crank back onto this customer's bike. And the basic tools you'll need is just a five millimeter a five millimeter um, Allen wrench and a torque wrench set at anywhere between 12 and 14 newton meters. So if you've been watching my channel for a while and you know that I grease everything so we're going to put drive side on first. And the dimensions of this bike call for spacers on both sides of the crank spindle. So remember, we put this 180 degrees. And then I have to jiggle this one just a little bit to get that spacer, I'm sorry, the tension pin here to fit. And there it is, right? So once that pin is inserted into the crank arm, there's a little hole in the, in the spindle, I should say, and that's nice and flush, now you're good. The next thing is you have to put preload on the bearings. So what I like to do is with a rubber mallet, I just wanna make sure that the crank drive side is on there well enough because this tool just doesn't have much oomph right i mean it's it's serrated so if your fingers start to hurt guess what you've got too much torque on it so you put that on there and then back it off just a little bit and then you check that the crank set moves freely make sure your plug is in there and then I like to start putting the torque on with these T-handles. And as I mentioned before, the torque is between 12 to 14 Newton meters. So we just get that going. And once I get a little bit of oomph behind it, then I switch over to the 90 like that. That way I can get a little bit more torque on it and then finish it off with the actual torque bridge. Now it appears that another mechanic has stripped out these bolts so this might slip a little bit. And we go back and forth because every time that you do this, you get a little bit, little bit more. You get another, there it is. Okay, so now both sides are torqued and that crank set's installed. That chain ring has been replaced. And that's how you replace a direct mount chain ring on an XT crank set. 
And I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but that lock ring is only for XT and SLX. So the XTR uses a different uh, lock ring. But <clears throat> the, the big thing with this is you need the tool because that, that uh, crank arm, that spindle is just, it's nearly impossible to use any other uh, tools for it. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed. If you haven't, please consider subscribing and please like and share. And in the meantime, we'll see you up the road.